Welcome back to Nick's Allotment, Sunday the 12th of December. I'm going to give you a bit of an update on what's, what's going on around the plot. Uh, show hey, these are my Christmas sub sprouts, as you can see. They're not very big, <laughs> like marbles. I didn't put many in this year because last year I had too many. And then and all just little tiny thing there if you still eat them okay this is uh my purple this is late purple i don't grow the early purple because it seems a bit tough so no my first lot the caterpillars had it and had to re sow late on so we've got three rows of that and these are Three rows of, of what are they? Tundra. I don't think they'll make anything, but I'll leave them in for now. There's a, few, a lot of weeds growing, won't get out. Mr. Mole there. Right. I don't know if you can remember, I had a row of Dutch irises here. These were the blue ones. And those ones in that row, they were the multicoloured. So I have got got them out, but these are what I must have missed. Uh, you'd be surprised what I've got. That's what the bulbs are like. Uh, these should have been put back in. I'll show them here a bit further round. This was Romanesco. I don't think it's going to make anything. I'll leave it in for now because I don't need the space. This up there, this is garlic marco. This is all off my own bulbs. I've saved it for quite a few years now. It's probably the best garlic I've grown. Don't worry, those are a bit later coming up. Uh, these are my leeks. This muscle bro. And I've got what these other ones are. But they've got the had the allium leaf miner in them. So when you peel them back, they've got that brown streak down the stem. This is all coffee grounds I've been picking up. So need to get that spread. Right, these two beds here. I've sheeted them up, I've mucked it and I've just tilled it in with a merry tiller and so it's be all ready for next year. I've still got in uh, the brassica cage to do but the last month I haven't had time to do nothing. <laughs> These are all my barn cloches, I just rather than take them all bits and put them back in the shed I uh, I just stand them up on there and to help hold the sheet down. And these are my broad beans aquedos under here. I don't know if you can see through the net. There, there. That one's been pulled. But I had trouble, it's either crows or magpies. So I've got quite a lot of either down here. And I've I've probably pulled at least 30 up. Don't think you can see them, them ones in there. See, these have been under the wire frame already. I never got those. So I never covered the other two rows. I need to get me, these are my runner beans here. Uh, gone soft now and it coming off and I have picked a load that in the greenhouse drying off okay these are me wallflowers that I grow myself uh, you can see look that's just one plant how nice and bushy that is and then you go in the garden centres and I think they charge £2.50 for six in the tray 
and I just think what a rip off you know the plants plants are never nowhere near as good as these I drilled these in I did drill a lot more rows but the, this was old seed in here and it never germinated so I've got to get rid of that seed and this was new seed so this is Persian carpet mix you can see up the other end I've harvested the other end and I've took those to my farmer friend so I want to have all my muck off so I went and planted those for him so that's my bit of bartering and this is where I've had too many cores yet but the birds and that are like pecking at them so I've left them there I need to get them up because I want to muck all this. I've got to get the bean canes down. Uh, my, I think my brassica cage is here next year. So I can move that down. Them are some marrows. I never planted those. I was just self-seeded. Uh, so this is my asparagus beds. I need to get the fern off. Dig those few raspberries that's crept out the fruit cage. So a few people down here want a few canes, so they can have those. So I need to just clean the beds up and put some muck on the top. As you can see, my neighbour Joe, he's done his. Right, I need to thin all my raspberries out. Take all the dead out and tie them all back in and then there's probably a lot of canes in here can come out and that variety is Glen Magna made some lovely raspberry jam off them this year I can't stand raspberries on their own but that was nice the jam uh, I think this one's a, a the Tay Berry but I've trained him all the way along here Oh, he's still got he's still gone further so he needs to be tied up on there really and then the other one here i'm going to thin it out a bit more but this is a a blackberry i think i had that from the supermarket for a quid black currants they need a bit of a prune I've got a gooseberry in here. I think there was three I put in. No, four I put in. There's a third one, and the fourth one never took. I don't know what went. Right, this is the muck I fetched. I don't think I showed you fetching this on my video. I did bring about, I'm guessing, 30 ton. I probably put 10 ton over on the two beds, so. Half of this will go on the other two beds, plus I need to make top some of these beds off over here. So these are me no dig beds. All these are coffee grounds I picked up. And on here. Still good. I've probably got nearly a ton, I should think, of coffee grounds. Right, so these are sparrowgrass, or sparrowgrass as I call it, and when the birds sit on these wires, after they've pecked the berries off, they poop, poop the seeds out, and they tend to grow under the line of the wires. So what I've done, I've dug them up and put them in the buckets, but at Christmas, just after Christmas, New Year, I'm going to put them all back in the tunnel just to see if I can get some early asparagus. You know, I might get it a month earlier than the rest of it. These are my carrots in here. Sweet candle. There's some good ones in here and there's some little ones. That was a good one.
There we go. What a beauty. I'll put him back in there. I'll pick him up in a bit. I'm going to try and grow some because that's got in there. It's all sharp sand and I've cored it out. I'll put a link in my video of uh, how I've done it. So I've cored it out and just put ordinary compost in. No extra fertiliser or anything. And I've never really watered any of this. I did the first month and then I forgot to water it. So I've got some beautiful carrots. Right, so these are me raised beds I made. I ain't going to call them no dig beds because I'm I probably do scratch about on them a bit like putting when I put the muck in I just try and churn it into the other a little bit and look at all these have you tried to grow pansies or violas but these are like the field violas with real miniature flowers look at thousands of plants in there I've pulled a lot up as well, that's just off one plant. I was thinking of putting some in the hanging basket. <laughs> the flowers are not brilliant. So I need to get on and finish cleaning these beds up. So that's the first one. This this one would be my brassicas, I think, next year. I've made a... I'm trying to do it crop rotation, but I made a bit of a mistake where I put things this time. These are more broad beans. You can see one coming up over there. There's one down there. Not. So I've just put these in to try and stop the crows. The net on, I mean. Right. This one's digging out. I should get the graft because I don't want it to come back up again, but it will. This is horseradish. Oh, I love the smell of that and the taste. So the, this bed wants cleaning out as well. Doesn't take long to clean them up. I just need to get my butt down here rather than sitting at home. Right. So these are the carrots. I just put straight into the the bed, so not bad carrots. There's the odd little bit of root fly on there. I was supposed to give me mate a load of these beetroot, but I think they've gone a bit far now. This is cylindrical. Then I've got some boltardi in here. I used to take all these, what I never used, to work. We used to have a pet pig. He used to love beetroot. Yeah, so in this bed, there is groundsel. That all needs to be weeded out. These are celeriacs. I had some the other day, quite nice. I don't know if I've had like blight in the celery because it went all funny, like brown blotches in it before, just before it was ready. More coffee. I've still got to go and pick some more up. If you ever need coffee, you just want to go to some of your local, like, well, I'll get mine from McDonald's and uh, I'll just pick it up every weekend. That's places you want to find out or plenty of coffee shops if you always ask there I'll probably save it yeah it's just like low in nitrogen but the worms absolutely love it so there's my swede I haven't had much success with the swede they went all look the tops rotted out There's these cabbage, these are tundra, you won't believe these are the same age as the ones up the top, done out the same batch, they've done better in here, oh look, 
I've been picking these cauliflowers. I'm going to take this one out for tea. Looks a bit yellow, but it's still quite nice. I can't remember the variety of that. And there's some more here. I'm sure they're collies. And then this is my garlic. So in here there's 11 in a row. I didn't get them very straight. Look, I miss he's out the line of the row. But um, so this variety is Marco again. This is all off my own seed. I'm just going to plant a few in a tray because if there's one just actually popping up there, it's really late coming up. But if I've just got any gaps, so I can replant it. So I put two. I put six rows of Marco in. And then we got this other variety. It's called Hopperdrome. It's probably half price in uh, one of the shops, one of the garden centres. It's coming up, but it's not not it's not so good as the Marco. It's all this was actually put in two days before the Marco, or it might have been longer than that. And then we've got Germador there. That's coming up. Nice, but the wind's blowing the pots with the spare ones in over. And the other thing, I don't know which pot's which. Right, these are me parsnips. So in this in this bed, I think one's gladiator and one's I forgot what the other one is. But in this bed. When I first moved them to, to this position, there was a bit of horseradish growing down in the bottom, so I dug it out. But I've, I've got a piece come all the way up through there now. So I might have to dig down through the sand and get it out. Might be some nice uh, horseradish on there, but I don't want it growing in there. I, I don't think the parsnips are very good. They just look like little thin things. Don't know if I can get one out. Oh no. I shan't try. Right. I have got another bed I might core out next year. And then this bed compost in there, so I might just try carrots in neat compost. See how they go. Go, see and find a worm. I've got a lot of leaves in here. I had to put them here because I hadn't got no room in my bin. I'll show you why. But I need to start transferring those. Yes, yeah, so I've got ten bags there. They're quietly rotting down in there. Okay, so this is me. All my leaves I've been collecting. Well, it was up higher in the beam on the top. I could probably get four bags in there now. But I need to see when Joe's here or somebody give me a hand to put them in there. And I'll just put this tin on to try and stop the wind blowing them all out. And then this is what I, these are the leaves I collected last year. I didn't collect many last year. Right, so this is uh, leaf mulch. This is two years old, and it's what I've sieved to get all the uh, bits of stick out. That's some beautiful stuff, just like peat. I'll be using that. I might try some seeds in it to start with. Oh, I never showed you this, what I've made. I made this in the summer so it's my gazebo and then on the side this is like concrete reinforcing so I recycled that off Norman's plot when he sadly passed away and it was left there so I recycled that and I've used it on the roof 
So this is a seating area in the summer. We have a food down here. Me, Joe, anybody else that comes. I've put a grapevine there to try and trail it up and over the top to give it a bit of a shade. And here I had cucumelons growing on it. That's the best place for them. <laughs> right, this is me wildlife pond. I've got to sort this out this year. I just won't have no water left. These are mini bulrushes. And then over the back of this Dunnooks. Yeah, so over the back there's a lot of marsh marigolds. They're lovely. They all want thinning out because the pond only looks half the size it does. Or should be. And then in there is water soldiers. I cannot stand them. I don't know if you can see the fish bobbling around. Look, there's a big orange one there. I want to get rid of the fish out of here. If I could catch them, I'll put them in the lake at work. But uh, I'm going to have tadpoles here. It seemed to be here one day, and within a couple of days they've gone. So I don't know if I see these fat things eating them. Wish I hadn't have put them in there. Right, there's my bird feeders. I do fill them up, but in this area we've had bird flu here, and it's a bit of a catch 22. Do you feed them or not? Well, I've got to feed somewhere. Plenty of teasels left, look. Goldfinches love those. Right folks, that's enough of me ranting and rambling on. So, thanks for watching, subscribing, commenting, and we'll catch you all next time. Ta-ra!